Wealthy people have principles in which they live by. Wealthy people understand that there's rules to the money game that we must not go against because if you go against the rules of the money game, you have a higher chance of going back to being broke. I want to start off today with something real like powerful that's, that's really been on my brain, right? Not only have we been on this mission to help our audience and just the world, not just build wealth, but accumulate assets to change the narrative of their financial legacies, to help them make the exodus from poverty to middle class, to upper class, to generational wealth. Like not only have we we have been in the trenches with our people, empowering them financially. <laughs> We've also made sacrifices with them. And so one of the things I want to talk about tonight is God and money. Yeah. And I know that's a financial show, right? But we, we, like, the, we like this to be a real life show. And so I realized, I want, I want to really say this, that God did not put us here to be broke. He told us, be fruitful, multiply. But Jose, he also told us to have dominion. Right? He told us to have dominion, Jose. So that means we're not just here to be stewards. We are here to also be achievers. We are here to steward money steward the land he also told us to possess and so when you take possession of something Jose that means you you are actually doing what's necessary to take hold of what is rightfully yours and Jose I think for too long we have not understood what is rightfully ours so there's this saying in Proverbs Jose Proverbs 24, 2 through 4, where it says, A house is built on wisdom. It is established on understanding. But with knowledge, the rooms shall be filled with precious metal and riches. And so what I love about that, Jose, is the idea and the fact that in order for us to possess the land, in order for us to build the house, we need knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The understanding is we see the rules to the game, Jose. We take in the knowledge, Jose, and the wisdom comes from experience. Knowledge is the information, Jose. The information is all around us. Every week we come here, we make sure we give the people the information. That information that we give them, Jose, comes from the wisdom that I have accumulated over the years. So I am able to depict this information and break it down and give them analogies so they can say, aha, because once I make you have an aha moment, you have now put it in your brain that this is attainable. So I've turned my wisdom into practical steps, not just theory. Right? Like I, I've taken my wisdom. I've taken my experiences. I've taken my losses. I've taken my pain. I've taken my wins. I've taken my adversity. Molded it all together like a potter and say, here, eat from the fruit of my wisdom. And the dope part about the fruit of my wisdom is, is an all-you-can-eat buffet. Because I never stopped learning. So we're going to go a little deeper, Jose, because it says that if you, watch this, Jose, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But if you sow abundantly, you reap abundantly. 
So every time we do something, we are sowing seeds of abundance because we know that wealth is abundant. Wealth is abundant, Jose. There is not a lack of wealth nowhere on this earth. There is not a lack of wealth nowhere on this earth. So why is it that a certain group of people don't see the abundance, but they harbor in the lack? And there's another group of people who all they see, all they identify with, Jose, is abundance. And so the reason why we started the beginning off with the house analogy is because it never said, watch this, Jose, it didn't say that the house became rich off hard work. It didn't say the rooms in the house was full from hard work. It said the rooms in the house will be filled with precious metals and riches from knowledge. That's what it says. That's not my words, Jose. It's not my not. It's not my words. So, so we can build wealth by. Watch this, Jose. We can build wealth by gravitating to God, and then God gives us money principle. We can gravitate to God. And then God gives us money principles. Okay, so here's what we know, Jose. Here's what we understand about the idea of when we look at people that's wealthy. Wealthy people have principles in which they live by. Wealthy people understand that there's rules to the money game that we must not go against. Because if you go against the rules of the money game, you have a higher chance of going back to being broke. So what do they do? They abide by the rules. As a matter of fact, Jose, the rules become non-negotiable. And I got, this, I got this beautiful saying, Jose, that I said, we cannot negotiate the necessary. So what is the necessary? Stay away from the gray area of the rules that, is, that you need to abide by to stay wealthy. It's simple. But watch this, Jose. Here's the dope part about it. We cannot go to God just for money. We got to go to God for the principles that he have in order for us for life. There's life principles that are... So it's like if we abide by the life principles, then we get the abundance from everything else, Jose. And that's cool because what happens is the life principles keep us in line. I remember E.T. told me this one time, Jose. E.T. told me this one time I was on tour with him. He said, trap. He said, God punishes me more because I understand. I said, what? <laughs> huh? He said, once you understand, once you have enlightenment, once you have awareness, you are now accountable. He says, so when people walking around and they don't have awareness and they don't have enlightenment, I cannot hold them accountable. I say, dang, OG, that's, that's heavy right there. He said, but the, the minute you get enlightened, the mirror, the minute you come in contact, the punishment becomes severe. I said, ah, this is it. So the key at this point is saying, watch this. I want to be enlightened so that I can take possession of everything that you already have in store for me. Because as long as I'm living in the naive state, in the ignorant state, I actually don't get access to your essence.
So, Jose, my question is, how long do we stay naive to the purpose that is set for us? Okay, watch this, Jose. Here's something that's, here's something that's amazing right here. Watch this. It says that wealth is, I want to make sure I say it right, Jose. It is gained little by little, but it is taken away in bunches. It is gained little by little, but it is taken away, Jose, in bunches. So when I think about that, it made me think about when we tell people building wealth one share at a time. Because the, the power in consistently building it. We're going to talk about something tonight, Jose. Sam Walton now has three of his heirs that are now worth $100 billion. Three of them. This, is, this has never happened before. Three heirs worth $100 billion. That didn't happen overnight. That didn't happen overnight. So our goal, bro, is to help our people navigate the game over a long period of time. It's to help you understand that you will not get rich tomorrow. But you get rich in spirit as you understand you're on a journey. Progress enriches you. Progress improves your outlook on the game. When we, when we went to Kansas City, Jose, when we walked in there, the first thing we said was, oh, I see why they went. I said, I see why they went. It was a winner's environment. I said, Jose, we got to adapt this. This, this, ha this energy that they have in here, it has to be in my building. But here's the thing. When you go in there, all you see is footprints. You see the DNA. You see accomplishments. You see principles. So you see the formula of what it takes to win. You see the people who have won before. You understand the prestige in this establishment. And it made me think. When we go to certain households, what do you see when you walk in the house? Do you see the blueprint of the family? Do you see the tradition of the family? Do you see the achievements of the family? Do you have a reason why you have to aspire to be better? Because the family's legacy, the family's tradition is on winning. The family's tradition is we win. So when you look at the Walmart family, their tradition is we create billionaires. At this point now, the Walmart tradition is we create, Sam Walton's legacy is not Walmart, we create billionaires. That's his legacy. That's his legacy. That's his legacy. My seed created billionaires. This is my name now. So my question moving forward is, what will your seed produce? You're talking God and money. You tell a fruit, you tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Oh my God. You feed a family. 
from the fruit of the lips. So what are you speaking into the fam? What are you speaking into? Are you, are you telling your kids they stupid? Are you asking your kids why you did that dumb stuff? Or are you telling them you are the next millionaire? You will be a billionaire. You can't account. What are you feeding them from the fruit of your lips? And then from the fruit of your lips, what is the, tra what is the tradition that they see in the household that reinforces what you feed them from your lips? 